Arkham City, originally released in October of 2011, is currently available on Steam for $19.99, or on both PlayStation and Xbox, in a two-pack with Arkham Asylum, also for $19.99. This is, of course, the sequel to Arkham Asylum. After the events of Arkham Asylum, Dr. Hugo Strange apparently had enough political clout to fence off an area of the cities to hold all the criminals. Regardless of if they are violent or insane, they are all together here in the city. As you might guess, different members of Batman's rogues gallery have set up spears of influence within Arkham City. And the story will, of course, take you to all of these villains. And if the main story doesn't address one of your favorites, there are many other villains that are dealt with during side stories. But you'll have to take time to hunt those out. Much like the first game, we have an excellent voice cast, with Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill reprising their iconic roles as Batman and the Joker. Sadly, Arlene Sorkin doesn't reprise her role as Harley Quinn. Instead, we have Tara Strong doing her best, which sounds more like Toot Bronstein from Drawn Together than Harley Quinn to me, but she's trying. The gameplay is much more open than it was in the first game. From almost the very beginning, you have access to virtually the whole map. While you don't get to drive the Batmobile, you do get to glide around on Batman's cape. And you'll spend a lot of time gliding, then grappling onto something higher, and gliding some more. And the grappling plus gliding is also kind of a get-out-of-trouble-free card, as if you don't feel like dealing with a group of random thugs, you can just keep moving and they'll forget about you. Boss fights all have a unique gimmick to them. Fighting Mr. Freeze is testing you on how many stealth takedowns you know how to do. Solomon Grundy tests how well you can dodge and be precise with your quick fires, with some later bosses basically just being endurance tests. Side missions are here, but you can't do them all at once. Progress in the side missions is often gated by events taking place in the story, or by unlocking a new gadget for Batman to use, which can lead to backtracking into areas for some of the side missions, especially Riddler trophies. Combat is about the same as it was in Arkham Asylum. One button attacks, one button counterattacks, and one button dodges. And most gadgets have some way to be quick fired during combat. The higher combo you get with your attacks, the more damage you're doing. It may not be the most complex combat in the world, but it is very enjoyable and easy to pick up. But getting some really high combos is actually very difficult. This is a game that is squarely targeted at a Batman fan. There are a huge number of references to Batman comic storylines, movies, and cartoons. But for the most part, these are not super overt and in your face. They are there to be noticed and sort of chuckled at. This is a game that was really meant to be bigger and better than its predecessor. And for the most part, it does succeed in this goal. You have a bigger map with more varied gameplay. But you never have anything that really changes up the gameplay to a huge degree. Nothing like the Scarecrow sections from Arkham Asylum. Instead, you have an experience that is more even and polished throughout. So, is Arkham City still worth your time and money? Given its price tag of only $20 on PC, I would say absolutely yes. And it's an even better deal on Xbox and PlayStation, as it's still $20, but you get the first game along with it. And honestly, I think this game works a little better with a control pad as opposed to a mouse and keyboard. The only real mystery here is why these games haven't been made available on Switch yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't fixed fairly soon. Please do like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends.